Um, it originally started, I wanted to figure out a way to give back, and there's so many worthwhile causes in Manhattan, um, but I felt like I wanted to do something that every um, other person couldn't necessarily do, and so I figured what better way to give back than to use my legal skills that other people don't necessarily have. Um, and so I was looking for something that interested me, and I thought this might be a great way to give back. Uh, I started because uh, I just found that as time goes on and the practice of law becomes more depersonalized, more emails, more conference calls and all that, this gave me an opportunity to really reconnect with the community, and that has been an immensely rewarding part of the, uh, of the work that I've done with NELP. I started doing pro bono work in response to the economic crisis and the market crash in 2008 when millions of homeowners were losing their homes, and there was a call to the Bar Association to help out, and I was one of the lawyers who volunteered in the beginning of that project. I started doing pro bono work a few years ago after I had spent several years practicing law, both at a big firm uh, and some mid-sized firms, and then at my own small firm. Uh, I had done a lot of board service in my home community, and when that ended, um, I really wanted to get involved in a pro bono uh, project. And uh, the City Bar, being such a wonderful institution, uh, had a bunch of different projects. Um, I was naturally drawn to the Refugee Assistance Project. I started doing pro bono work actually when I was in law school and had always envisioned that that would be part of my practice. And to be quite honest, I can't imagine being a practicing lawyer without that component. Um, I've always been interested in pro bono work, and I've always done pro bono work, and uh, during the AIDS crisis, I actually represented a lot of uh, people with AIDS. I worked with gay men's health crisis, um, and I am a healthcare attorney, so I'm always interested in helping people who have serious illnesses, etc. I'm interested in the intersection of medical issues and legal issues, so I thought this would be a perfect project for me. I started doing pro bono work when I was a summer associate back in 1991, quite a while ago now. Um, as a summer associate at a law firm, I took on a housing case and um, loved the process. I, I could see right away that the huge need for pro bono services in the city of New York and the, uh, just the enormous number of people who needed but couldn't afford lawyers. Personally, it's, it's the connection to the community. That was why I, I uh, responded or originally, although I, I had personal pro bono requirements that I wanted to fulfill, and I wanted to do something that comported with the work I was doing and the location I was in. I, I really wanted something that could connect me to the community and to kind of help people, uh, for, for lack of a better way to describe it. Um, my clients, when I was practicing, were big corporations in big companies. They were great companies represented by really nice people, but there's something that, that you get a, a strong sense of satisfaction, a strong sense of connection when you can tell someone sitting across the table how to deal with their credit card company or how to address a government agency. Um, that, that sense of community purpose and assistance um, is invaluable to me and I I think that I can speak for the many people that have volunteered for this program over the years to say that that sense of belonging in the community, that sense of, of, of doing something for the community and helping people resolve their problems is a very, very important part of being a part of Monday Night Law. I, I grew up in the city and I think homelessness is something that confronts you every day when you live here and it's something that's hard to ignore. Um, so I knew that when I became aware is that I had opportunities to actually do something meaning, meaningful about it. I think working for a law firm is a rare opportunity to actually do something helpful for the community. Through the Consumer Bankruptcy Project, uh, I was able to help a veteran. Um, he was a Vietnam vet, had been gainfully employed for years as a salesman. Uh, with the turn in the economy, he lost his job when they downgraded their sales force. Uh, he didn't have much family support and ended up homeless uh, after having a lot of difficulties. Um, through the project, we were able to file a petition for him, um, and after he got his fresh start, he, he was employed by the, uh, the homeless shelter as a mentor, um, and my understanding is doing fairly well now. You know, this is, not, this is kind of pleasurable, because this is an opportunity for an attorney to really represent someone directly. Very often, um, most of the attorneys, or many of the attorneys who are members of this Bar Association, represent corporations, or we represent 
they may represent individuals, but it's more in a business capacity. Um, and in this project, you're really working with someone uh, who's facing a serious medical condition. It's very cutting edge. It's law at a very, it's very pure. There's something very fundamental, um, rudimentary about your relationship with the client. Uh, and it's very gratifying. So it's almost as if it's not work, because it's almost as if you have a mission and you want to accomplish that mission. You know, life, is, life has got its challenges. We're in a, we work in a busy city at a busy firm. There are demands on all of our professional time and our home time and our community time. Um, to juggle pro bono amidst all that is easy. First and foremost, I've got a wonderful group of terrific, smart, energetic lawyers that provide a huge amount of the legwork on all of the cases that we've taken on for the city bar. Uh, juggling is even easier when you've got Martin York and Jennifer Kim at the ready to help you with uh, any kind of question that comes up, night or day, she'll put you in contact with experts and um, they'll put you in contact with other lawyers so that you can get feedback. They really are a true resource that makes all the juggling that much easier. You know, it's very important to, to try to create an atmosphere uh, at a law firm where, where if you have to leave to go to a, a, a clinic, or you have to leave to go to a fair hearing for one of your pro bono clients, so that the firm supports it. And I think it's important um, for the lawyers there to, to, to work on that. Now that I've sort of moved up the ranks from associate to partner and I, and I now run the, help run the pro bono committee in my firm, it's now part of my responsibility to make sure that, that associates don't feel intimidated to, to, to commit significant time to pro bono work and they feel encouraged to do it and know that it not only helps them as a lawyer but allows them to give back. And, and so I think it's, it's really up to the people in charge of the law firm to create that type of atmosphere and it's up to the, the volunteers to, to really pursue their passions and, and to you know and to do their best um, uh, to convince others that it's really really, really worth worth the commitment. Well, as far as people that want to start off doing pro bono, that as the Nike commercial says, just just do it, just get involved. It's 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 not going to be ever a situation in which you think, oh, now is the time that it feels right for me to do pro bono as, as a, you know, in terms of timing or in terms of availability. Um, you just need to get started. It's, it's, the timing is never going to be perfect, and you're never going to feel like you have enough time to devote to it, but you do, in fact, have enough time to devote to it. <laughs> Embrace it all. You'll have some interesting clients, but you'll learn a lot. You'll learn a lot quickly. Uh, sometimes you have to be a counselor as well as an attorney, uh, and these people truly need your help, so it's worth giving your time. That's kind of a really nice thing for people to know is that even if you don't necessarily practice in that area, there are the resources available to help and to guide you throughout the process so that you kind of have that um, backing as you're working through the issues that you see. Kudos to the City Bar and, and the Justice Project. They did fabulous work. They make it easy for you to succeed. They make it easy to, to do pro bono. They take care of so many of the ancillary, logistical, and other uh, aspects that uh, really there's no excuse for you out there not to do